Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, September 26, 2011, and I'm Darko. This is part two of the News Bulletin, and this is my website, ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Also, ddarko2012 is my YouTube channel. That's ddarko2012. Um, I'm not going to go through all this stuff right now, but just you can put in your email there, and there's a poll here, and you can go and check that out and kind of navigate through the site. If you're a new listener, there is stuff all the way to the bottom um, that you can check. And it uh, talks about uh, more gelins and chemtrails and all that fun stuff. So uh, go in there and check that out. All right, so I'm going to get going here because I didn't wasn't able to cover too many articles um, last video. I just wanted to take my time with what I was trying to say as far as offering solutions. So, um, and hopefully I'm not too boring. So it's here, richest man reportedly. Uh, to join party leadership, and it says here, China's richest man and chairman of the human-based heavy machinery producing producer, Sony Group, looks uh, set to become the first private entrepreneur to enter the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China. So it makes it sound like uh, the Communist Party of China isn't friendly to uh, corporations. Well, pfft. communism was set up, and the concept and philosophy was created by banks and rich people and elitists. So I just... That's all you really would want to know, I would think. And it says here, New World Trade Center tower to be made with glass from China and steel from Germany. So the good old U.S. of A. Um, says here that uh, the following is an excerpt from a report on the MLK Memorial in the Telegraph. And it goes in here and talks about uh, how the... Um, Martin Luther King statue was actually made in China, and it goes in and says it's not just another skyscraper; it's uh, a national monument. And of course, remember what I've said before: um, is is that basically these false flag terror attacks, like these uh, Reno air crash and the Indiana um, fair, those are ritual sacrifices. And after a ritual sacrifice takes place, and blood is spilled and sacrificed to whatever Luciferian gods that they're sacrificed to, um, they usually build a national monument to honor those that were murdered. Falkland Islands 2016 for oil says rock hopper but islanders cautious, says rock hopper explorations announcement this week that they expect to begin pumping oil in 2016, set the international media off and on a further round of speculation about future wealth, but Falklands stakeholders and interested parties are taking a more cautious approach. And the reason for the cautious approach is because they first need to establish the cost uh, that it might be to produce hydrocarbons from the field and not so much uh, the international community and uh, other Argent Argentinian people um, being against this. Um, um, I was a young person at this time, so honestly, I don't remember it from uh, when I was a kid. But older people may. The oil war in the Falkland Islands, I mean, there's been a lot of uh, stuff covered on this. But uh, basically, it's one of the hugest fields in the world. And it was basically the British went down there and uh, started this big war. And and uh, now British companies are going to go and start uh, pumping the oil out. And it's almost like they just waited a certain amount of years until... Um, they drain the Middle East out, out of all their oil. And people pretty much forgot about the Falkland Wars. Maybe enough chemtrails and barium and aluminum and power lines and ELFs will uh, help them to just forget that the thing even happened. So it's here, cash for kids. Judge who took $2 million from private jail owner to imprison innocent children is locked up. It says here, a former judge who locked up thousands of innocent children and a scam that made him the co-conspirator uh, more than $2 million has been jailed for 17 and a half years. And he said he took bribes from the builder of the two profit-making detention centers in Pennsylvania. And this is a big deal, these private prisons, um, you know, and, and these profit-making um, deals that go on between the government and that. And, you know, what is my solution? No government. With no government, you have pretty much common law. Most most people, including tribes, agree. Indigenous tribes agree with common law. So if we did go back to that, you would you wouldn't have these private prisons because there would they they wouldn't be uh, uh, there because there'd just be common law. And maybe there would be prisons. I don't know, but I honestly don't think so. I, uh, I think there would be a completely different justice system. Uh, without the government, but you definitely wouldn't have these big, quote, correctional facilities and now private prisons, so that's my solution for that. Uh, moving on here, 
I'm reading from my computer, supermarkets eliminating self-serve checkouts. So uh, basically it goes in there and it sells the uh, most shoppers side with the studies and it says here they're bag they're bagging to do it yourself option once considered the wave of the future and the name of the customer service is going out of st and I personally I don't like these things I don't like them because not only does it uh, replace a human being um, for doing a job but it's really it's, it's hard to work with especially with like produce and stuff like that and um, and that's the whole point of it is to uh, decrease overhead and cost and that's why they put these things in here and it looks nice and everything like back in the 90s when you saw this um, but like my personal experience is when I go I, I try to avoid these things but I usually go through them when um, there's only two cashiers two human beings working with about 20 empty lines that are sh that are basically closed off and there'll be like two workers um, usually over the age of 60 um, look really like they're in bad health and they use them and they just sit there for uh, on uh, for eight hours or ten hours or something like that and then uh, they have like these uh, self-checkout lines and they'll have one person that just eyes you they it's like they just sit there and they eye you like you're doing something wrong like you're about to do something wrong so I don't like that aspect as well and I have a lot of problems with it and um, so that's that's my reason for uh, not liking or supporting them um, it says here US net neutrality uh, rules finalize in effect no November 20th so it says uh, get ready it's finally coming it says that's the plan the FCC it just filed the final open internet rules with the Federal uh, Register, which plans to publish them tomorrow and make them official. Rules go in effect November 30th, nearly a year after they were passed over Republican opposition on a 3-2 to two vote, said one of uh, the FCC commissioners sorry, who voted against the rules now works for Comcast. Okay, so what is my solution for this? Well, this is a government um department or um, you know a mini corporation a, a sub corporation of the government which is a huge corporation uh, my solution is to end the government you wouldn't have um, people like this they would act as if they are um, not tied to any f uh, outside uh, interest they have no invested interest but to serve the people right um, no it's not so and inevitably uh, the system will become corrupt so you can go in there and you can clean house and have a bloody revolution but inevitably, you're going to get douchebags like this uh, in their, rep quote, representing you. So they don't represent you. And in fact, they actually work for the companies that they are uh, uh, proposing to oppose. So they work for Verizon. They work for the telecom companies, like they said. Um, so people that uh, work for the um, energy department, will, they usually will work for uh, oil companies and that, um, coal companies nuclear company uh, the ATF supposed to be in charge of uh, uh, fire uh, firearm control are actually selling weapons to Mexican drug cartels and they were caught um, people uh, police and um, federal officials um, the DA DEA that are uh, supposed to be stopping uh, the drug trade that we're on the whole war on drugs we've lost all of our freedoms we've had all this uh, uh, all these local police stations militarized like they're the freaking Marine Corps uh, recon and uh, that's all to stop the drugs but you know it's kind of funny because they actually help deal the drugs so they actually don't do anything that they're supposed to be doing so that whole argument is kind of gets thrown out the window uh, so they've they failed miserably like the Federal Reserve they failed miserably don't do what they're supposed to do like Gaddafi said with the United Nations supposed to prevent wars there's been wars since then haven't done what they've uh, were supposed to do they're not they're not fulfilling their contracts so if you were to support a, a state a government and contract into that and vote and say and take your number your social security number and be a tax slave well then you're gonna want certain returns on your investment you're getting no returns so dump the investment dump the state that's my solution. Facebook criticized for tracking logged out users. Facebook faces criticism over the way it continues to store and access information about users who have logged out of their accounts. This is pretty scary because I never thought about this, but it's a, it's a pretty good likelihood. And it goes on here and it says that Australian technology entrepreneur found that even after he logged out of the social networker uh, network, it delivered cookies to his website browser that could be used to track visitors to other websites. What is my solution? The only solution is to delete every Facebook cookie in your browser or to use a separate browser for Facebook interactions. Next up, we have speaker describes internet surveillance. Then uh, we have, he goes on here and he says, Jeff Chester, who heads the Center for Digital Democracy in D.C., 
is delivering a warning that our personal data and personal habits are being systematically collected and marketed for corporate and political gain. Powerful forces, he says, are shaping the future of the internet and other digital media. So you can go in there and check that out. I have to keep uh, moving here for time's sake because i got to get through these articles. Uh, brain scans let computer reconstruct movie scenes. Again, this is something that I've already theorized about. Uh, being able to tap in your uh, dreams, and that's why that you know, like that movie with Inception and stuff like that. Um, and it says here, it sounds like science fiction, of course. And uh, while volunteers watch movie clips, a scanner watched their brains, and from their brain activity, a computer made rough con reconstructions of what they viewed. Of course, this is what it's supposed to do. Scientists reported the result Thursday and speculated such an approach might be able to reveal dreams and hallucinations someday. See, so they want to know everything. You will have no privacy, and in fact. Me personally, this is my own theory, my own little hypothesis, whatever you want to call it, uh, is that they already this technology already exists and that there is personal profiles on every single one of us and they can tap into our dreams and they can um, uh, implant things in your dreams. And I've come uh, to the point where I can actually identify them in my dreams and I've found ways to deal with it. So there are solutions to that as well. Um, but uh, I, I'll go into that another time because it's kind of deep. But either way, um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty pretty crazy stuff if they can get inside your dreams and get inside your head. I mean, think about it. It could literally be like the Matrix um, where you're – if you're someone as a person of interest that the powers that be don't like, you could be walking in the street or walking in public and people that are just – Passerbys, innocent passerbys who don't know you, don't know anything about you, can be tapped into by this – whatever this – this mainframe infrastructure system is and they could actually view you so they don't need cal these cameras the people are the cameras and they can view you wherever they want to tap you in because they have your frequency they have your energy uh frequency tapped into because you all give off little um a uh, little energetic field and it's unique to you just like your dna and they can tap into that that is my theory and it says here, autonomous kill bots continue uh, a trend. And it says here, American team developed software enables an arm UAV to seek out, identify, and attack with missile targets without any human intervention, which is what they want, right? Get rid of the human element. So uh, it's creating alarming headlines. Capability is nothing new and first appeared in World War II. Work on these robotic weapons has continued since then, much to the joy of journalists looking for a scary story. It goes in and says the Air Force has a good reason to develop this software. So um, I don't know. I think this may be a disinfo piece, but go in there and check that out. NYPD chief police could take down plane. This is uh, kind of big news. Chief of New York Police Department says the police could take down a plane if needed. And uh, that's pretty – but it's funny because what? Um, there's a lot of people out there that, uh, that do believe as part of the 9-11 false flag um, attack – was the planes were shot down. The Pentagon was hit with a missile, and the plane um, that was in Pennsylvania was shot down, along with other planes um, in, uh, in history that have been, quote, shot down. And uh, that would make sense because, you know, they already have the technology to shoot something down. If I remember correctly, it was a Pan Am jet over New York City that in the ocean that uh, – that went down, and there was actually reports that that was hit by a missile. NYPD missiles would not have stopped 9-11. Mayor Bloomberg cast doubt on the police chief's claims that the cops can shoot down planes. So that's just one – that's 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 one department of middle management not getting the memo that, shh, up, you're not supposed to be talking about that. Ogden, Utah, police first the nation to use surveillance blimp. This is September 23rd. $40,000 surveillance blimp will cost uh, well below that, possibly as low as 15000 and it goes on here, and it keeps helium in charge with its own electric batteries. Sounds nice and great and everything, right? But uh, actually, there was one of these Lockheed Martin's high-altitude airships uh, that was basically made to surveil you for Homeland Security, and it crashed in Ohio this year as the first trial run. Uh, the Age of the Reaper, go in there and check that out. Talking about the uh, the drone fighters, military drones found on North Carolina beach from Cherry Point, near North Carolina, for a live fire exercise. Then we have new helicopter fleet for the city police. Says city board estimates was uh, poised this morning to approve a $9.5 million purchase of a new fleet of helicopters for the Baltimore Police Department. And of course, the $9 million uh, was mostly stolen, uh, coming from taxpayers and a general fund. One million will come from assets that were stolen from uh, drug raids and that. 
Um, lastly, we have uh, basically a sheriff in New York to ask legislators to fund departments, helicopters, and... This is about militarizing the police. GGN and I'm Darko.